area in the name of Jesus Christ the power of the Holy Ghost is touching you right now touching you right now someone just around the throat I don't know what it is it looks like a growth some inflammation there right now I stretch my hands towards you let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus There's someone you've been throwing up just for meeting. You're not particularly sick, but it looks like your body's reacting to something. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. The Lord is showing me 11 people. I'm seeing the number 11. The Lord wants to take away the manifestation of the spirit of death over that family. I want you to bring them out. 11 of them. The power of God is coming on them right now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the spirit of the Christ. I stretch my hands. Bring them out. We minister life by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. They that have been appointed unto death. Oh death. Where is your victory? Oh grave. Where is your victory? And oh death. Where is your sting? Please bring them out. There's a reason why we ask that they come out. You'll be seated shortly. But we're praying. We administer the life and the power of the Spirit. That every planting. Every plague. Majesty. We are still praying. There are people representing families. Some of you, this is not just about you. He said, as for me and my house, it is always about you and your house. I prophesy again that any family here appointed unto death, whether in the air, whether by land, whether by sea, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of the living God, I decree and declare, and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their life been subject to bondage. The Elohim at night thy kingdom come thy will be done hello thy kingdom come sing it as a prayer over my life hello hello in the name of Jesus for all of you who are out here I declare by the spirit of the living God that every appointment with the grave every spirit of the grave calling you calling your loved ones I use these ones in front as a point of contact to everyone hearing the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus we shut the gates of the grave shout a believing amen we shut the gates of the grave Veronica Veronica I'm hearing a name Veronica will be seated shortly Veronica I came tonight with my spirit fired up 
who is Veronica the Spirit of the Lord is ministering to me Veronica just want to pray for you very quickly in the name of Jesus the Christ of God madam this woman stand up please where are you coming from I want to pray for you did you come alone I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Do you know why you came here? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you lying down inside a coffin. I have to pray for you. It is good to come to the house of God. Can I pray for you, ma? I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and even the life. And I decree and declare every appointment with death now over you and your family. I speak as one sent by the Lord God of heaven. I declare it comes to an end now. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm from Benway State. Stand, let me pray for you. Now, I'm not a prophet of doom. I want to pray for you. I'm looking at a tree and I'm seeing a black band tied around a tree. What does this have to do with your destiny? We have to pray. This is not some negative prophecy. We are ministers of life. But then I'm just revealing to you to let you know that God is interested in you. I stretch my hands towards you. Mama, let me pray for her, Mama. Just a moment. In the name of Jesus, Veronica, life right now. In the name of Jesus, blotting out every handwriting the Bible declares and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, I declare every appointment with failure, every appointment, every negative writing over your destiny. We curse it right now in Jesus' name. Your Veronica and you too my dear shout jesus as loud as you can jesus! it's over in the name of jesus christ madam i want to pray for you i stretch my hands in the name of jesus and i decree and declare cycles and patterns around your life cycles i use her as a point to help her please I use her as a point of contact. Just hold her glasses so it's not destroyed. Cycles. Every reoccurring pattern over anyone's life here. Certain seasons. Strange occurrences seem to repeat themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, the spirits behind them, we declare judgment now. Judgment now. Judgment. Judgment now. Don't be tired though, we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Emeka? Emeka, I'm hearing a name. Emeka, I presume there may be a number of people. Emeka. Who is from Imo State? Emeka. Come. Hold on, I want to pray for you. Don't worry, you, you all came, I'll pray for you. What do you do, my friend? I'm an actor. Nollywood actor. Nollywood actor. Yes. Where is your wife? She's at the back. Come. please stand up i will restore to you the years that the kanka worm has eaten the palmer worm has eaten in the name of jesus i'm speaking to you in the open by the power that raised christ from the dead by prophecy we shift you back to honor we shift you back to honor we shift you back to honor. 
in the name of Jesus Christ we shift you back to honor by the power of the Holy Ghost shame reproach let it be far from you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God is coming on one of you here one of these gentlemen will be seated shortly but let me just pray one of you I just saw fire just coming on one of you one of you who is standing here in the name that is above all names I declare please help them by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare right now it burns every chaff in the name of Jesus please open your mouth in one minute and pray is 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 my season to rise and everything standing help them everything standing let it be declared by the power that raised Christ from the dead it's a season of lifting by the spirit the path of the just the bible declares is as a shining light that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day shines ever brighter unto the perfect day shines ever brighter i contend for an ever brighter destiny in christ an ever brighter destiny no better yesterdays no better yesterdays an ever brighter destiny in the name of jesus the christ of god hallelujah may god bless you sir what's your name are you from emo state where are you from emo state come what do you do sir medical sales representative in a pharmaceutical company come again i'm not sure i got you i'm a sales representative in a pharma company okay i want to pray for you have you had a dream that you will own your own firm yes, huh? yes, was i there it's time for that dream to come to pass because i'm seeing that the lord gave you a dream that you will also own your own medical firm i pray for you believe what i'm saying in the name that is above all names the grace that makes for establishment may that grace be released upon you in the name of jesus the christ of god hmm. you are a muslim but you were invited come don't feel embarrassed there, there are no prejudices here the Lord is ministering to me. Let me just speak to that person. You are a young lady. No, this one, you are wearing even a black. You are wearing something black like a nose mask on your nose. Right now with a veil. Who is that? Come. Let the nations know that Jesus, the same one has been exalted to be both Lord and Christ. Look what is happening to them. Look what is happening to them, my God. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that at the mention of that name every knee will bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, of things under the earth. Listen to me. Look up, my dear ones. This is not a religious place. This is not a place for Christians. It's a place for everyone Jesus died for. Everyone. Everyone Jesus died for. Here's what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his now firstborn among we the begotten that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal. The Lord brought you here to bless you and I want to pray for you even before you hear the word I don't know you but in the name of Jesus let her come leave her alone let her come
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is no other. Let me encourage you here with love and every sense of responsibility. If you're a minister of the gospel, I pray that you will contend for the grace that validates the reality of the things you propose. The times that we live in require a Jesus whose love and whose power can, should, and must be demonstrated in the midst of his people. A theoretical Jesus will not go very far. We must bring him to the scene. He says the kingdom of heaven is now within your reach. I bless you. My dear one, this one is under the anointing, but I bless you. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I pray for you because you have come here. This is a place of love. This is a place of the spirit. You will never return back the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're not here like second-class citizens. No, we're before the king of all of us, all kings. I want you to be as comfortable as you can and enjoy the presence of God with no sense of fear whatsoever because this is also your house. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please return back to your seat. And for every one of you here, you are blessed in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Please return back rejoicing. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to do right now before we sit down, strangely, but it's good to be led of the Spirit of God, I want to make an altar call. You are here, you came to church. The opening prayer was a message. Testimonies, a message. The worship song, they were singing messages. By now you should know whether you really need Jesus or not. I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. But here is the advice coming from a heart of love that you choose life that you and your household may live. In this place right now, there are people who have never truly made a decision for Jesus. You've been at conferences, you've been at meetings, You've joined to cry. You've joined to clap. You've joined to celebrate people. Maybe they even hold cell fellowships in your house. That's not what makes for salvation. You're in the overflow right to the basement. You're outside and some of you are watching by way of TV, the internet. And Jesus is calling you. You have a choice to reject him. It's a choice. We don't choose consequences. We make choices and the choices decide the consequences. But right now, I'm calling on someone who will be bold enough, strong enough to say, Apostle, I came for Koinonia and I'm ready to win that war. I want to run to Jesus. As I count one to five without any sense of shame, leave your seat and run like there's fire on the mountain one two come young and old alike run to jesus with understanding would you dance with me your lover of my soul to the song of all songs keep coming would you dance with me your lover the 
song of all songs. One more time. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Dance me, me, your lover. I song of whoever will come to him the bible declares that he will in no wise cast away the global harvest is a responsibility that in life and in death we must commit ourselves to jesus is not the founder of a religion that is better than every other religion that's an insult to him he is life the way he declared the truth and his life some of you are standing and you're crying don't be ashamed of your tears he can always give you a new beginning regardless what has happened or not happened around your life and it's a joy and an honor to lead you even as we begin the teaching of the word he said ye must be born again you can stand here and not mean what you say and return back with nothing happening but you can stand here determined knowing that jesus is here for scripture declares that where two or three are gathered in my name i'm in the midst of them lift your right hand to jesus those are the basements the overflows just lift your hand and you who is following in your home your office following from your device you need jesus right there in the silence of your heart you can lift your hands to the lover of your soul i want you to say this after me from the depth of your heart jesus one more time say it say jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you shed your blood for my sin i believe that you resurrected for my justification tonight i make you my savior my lord my king i receive the life of god into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness help them please help them look the power of salvation the power of genuine salvation I declare we're praying repeat after me say I declare from today that I am saved I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus father thank you for this ones they have come to you and the Bible declares that as many who will come you will in no wise cast away now I commend you all to the ministry of the word I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare that you will know him and he will turn you into signs. He will turn you into wonders. I declare that everything that represents a limitation in your life and your Christian experience, let it be rolled away. The grace and the empowerment to live victoriously, I impart upon you in the name of Jesus, who is both Lord and Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you and a big congratulations to all of you. I'd like you to follow a gentleman who is waving a placard at you. Those under the anointing, just carry them gently. Please just follow him very quickly. There will be a group of people to walk with you and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Hallelujah. Are we ready for tonight? One prayer, open my eyes, O God, and grant me understanding. Please lift your voice and pray. Let's minimize distractions. Let's pray. We are before the God of heaven. The mysteries of the kingdom. Open my eyes, O oh God, 
even by the power of your spirit the god of patterns and that patterns are the predefined and authorized methodologies we do not do spiritual things anyhow in this kingdom there are prescribed patterns that lead to specific spiritual outcomes there is a pattern for salvation there is a pattern for receiving the holy spirit there is a pattern for prosperity in the kingdom there is a pattern for restoration there is a pattern for spiritual growth are we together that all the possibilities in the kingdom are governed by spiritual patterns and that when we know these patterns and engage them with understanding then our lives can come into the fullness of the experience of the kingdom and the assignment of the teaching ministry is to unveil to open us up to these dimensions you see let me tell you something about the teaching ministry the way you teach in a conference or a convention it's not the same way you teach the people that God has sent to you when you're teaching in a conference for instance you're limited by time you have a day or two and so you are just compressing everything but once you are building people you must take the time to open them up to not just the awareness of those truths but the dynamics of their operation God's people must know how things work in the kingdom this is why sometimes you see we break these teachings into series because there's no point rushing just giving an information we must be very methodical teaching in a way and manner that will hold those truths and handle them and then command results from them hallelujah and we began to examine a few principles i call them the laws of the kingdom the mysteries matthew 13 and verse 11 jesus told us that this body of truth they are called mysteries or secrets they are not mysteries necessarily because they are hidden they are mysteries because they are privy only to the people in the kingdom for the natural man the bible declares cannot understand the things of the spirit why because they are spiritually discerned are we together we considered a few four of them i told you that in total there are nine of them that the lord revealed to me but um i think we'll just we'll just do seven and it will suffice for this series and even all of these seven they deserve to be isolated and dealt with specifically and i hope that in in other sessions of the world we'll have the time to deal with them number one we said was the law of complete surrender the first spiritual law that governs unusual dimensions of power and grace the law of complete surrender we saw this in the life of jesus we saw this in the life of jacob we saw this in the life of paul that in this kingdom the way we gain is by losing when we keep things we lose them the law of complete surrender I told you that this law vetoes your fasting your prayer your night vigils no matter what spiritual experience you're involved in and you're involved with if the state of your heart is not completely surrendered unto God it will negate any other thing you are involved with are we together number two the law of the mind or the law of mental transformation this is the second spiritual law that is responsible for undeniable results in the life of the saints. That your life and the quality of your living will always be a reflection of your mindset, your belief system. This perhaps is the hardest of the journeys of many believers because it takes a long time to deconstruct. Many of them antagonistic to the ways of God. And so when we come before the Lord like this, we have to trust him for grace, for the transformation of our mind. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Philippians chapter 4 from verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, 
whatsoever things are honest just pure lovely of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it says think on these things philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a superior belief system there was a mindset a set of beliefs that made jesus excel and so number three is the law of mastery and competence proverbs 18 and verse 16 the path of the just the bible declares i mean uh, the gift of a man makes room for him and brings him before great men the law of mastery and the law of competence this is quite an instructive one your relevance in this kingdom is based on your ability to serve your generation with the gift that god has given you the spiritual investment the intellectual investment upon your life when refined then you are able to serve your generation with it in it is your relevance in it is your satisfaction your fulfillment in it is your reward are we still together praise the name of the lord and we did say that being valuable or discovering your ability is not enough as powerful as it is to discover your ability just having potentials is not enough potential means what can be what should be but what is not yet it takes refining it so that you become very productive and i told us that the kingdom operates on a reward system you know you are valuable when you look back and find someone following you you must be desirable enough someone must be able to unashamedly place a demand upon your gift and upon your value if no one is following you you are not valuable it's as honest and as simple as that praise the name of the lord then number four the law of faith the law of faith are we still together the fourth spiritual law the law of faith numbers 23 19 god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent i told you god became a man but he is not a man god is not a man he became a man faith is your conviction and then your corresponding obedience your action of obedience you can act but if in disobedience you are not manifesting faith many people act but they act in disobedience the dynamics of faith we explained is in romans chapter 4 from verse 18 down to 21 abraham were told to look at as a reference the bible recommends him as the biblical reference as far as the journey of faith is concerned so we consider this four we'll look at three more today and then we'll pray please pay attention pay attention in the name of jesus christ three of these spiritual laws that are responsible for our excelling in the kingdom by the way let me say this you must realize that for us kingdom people everything we learn and everything we know is connected to kingdom come our prosperity <clears throat> excuse me our prosperity our lifting everything we teach is not isolated from kingdom the reason why we desire to prosper is so that jesus be revealed jesus be glorified the reason why we desire that all of the forces the arsenals of darkness that plague believers that they are out of our lives is to the end that jesus be revealed jesus be glorified anything that is not connected to kingdom come no matter how accurate it is cannot find its true relevance in the kingdom are we together praise the name of the lord now in this part three we want to deal with three laws number one for this series is the law of relationships pay attention someone is about to prosper god wants to hand you a key that will change your life forever the law of relationships the command be fruitful means be relational because everything it advances 
increases and multiplies on the basis of relationship again everything advances increases and multiplies on the basis of relationships relationships are advantageous connections please write it down relationships are advantageous connections Just because someone is in close proximity to you does not mean you are in a relationship. For instance, an armed robber and his victim. An armed robber is close to a victim but they are not in a relationship. Are we together? Yes, because it's not advantageous. So relationships are advantageous connections. The easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships. People of God, this is true. Absolutely true. That the easiest way to rise the easiest way to excel in life is through relationships and lot went with him god called abraham he did not call lot the bible records and lot went with him and as a result he began to excel he began to do well very powerful relationships are currencies currencies they can purchase things and bring them into the life of individuals. This is true. Like dollar, like naira, like pounds, like euros. Relationships are currencies. More superior currencies. They can purchase things and they can bring it into the lives of individuals. The same way you can take a million naira, for instance, and go and buy, say, a TV set. The same way you can take, say, 10 million 40 million a hundred million and you buy a very beautiful vehicle or you buy a house you can take relationships like money and go and buy things and return back and your receipt will be right paid for by relationships this is very powerful relationships are currencies they can purchase things into our lives three scriptures very quickly amos chapter 3 and verse 3 We'll hurry up so that we'll do justice to the other two. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Can two work together? Can two people, can two companies, can a couple, can a business, can two work together except they be agreed? It's a question. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24. Very quickly, please. Apologize. I'm, I'm just hurrying up so that we can cover a bit tonight proverbs 18 and verse 24 let's read together if you can see it projected ready one to read a man that hath friends uh-huh must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother so the bible says that he who desires friends must first show that seed of friendliness this immediately explains why many of us do not have friends immediately more than demonic attacks and more than these other auxiliary problems here is the diagnosis from scripture that it could be that you have not demonstrated friendliness enough for someone to invest his life in your life he that wants friends must first show himself friendly are you learning something already write this down please Style it if you can if you're using your note you want to just put something there relationships do not maintain themselves very good news relationships do not maintain themselves the parties involved must commit to maintaining it this for many of us will come as a revelation relationships do not maintain themselves your relationship with god your relationship with the holy spirit in fact even your relationship god forbid but even an individual's relationship with demons they don't maintain themselves the parties involved must commit to maintaining it that means if a spirit refuses to leave you something about your life is demonstrating friendliness are we together 
to that spirit there is something about your understanding and your habitation that makes that spirit miss you so much it does not want to leave because according to the law of relationships the moment there is an unfriendly environment there is a separation so whatever it is that makes a spirit refuse to leave you refuse to leave your habitation it calls for check the bible says when a spirit leaves a man it leaves that man and goes to a desert the desert becomes so unfriendly to that spirit it will prefer to go back and pay the price and renegotiate friendship with you and this time it will not come alone it will gather seven other spirits the bible says greater than itself relationships do not maintain themselves the parties involved must commit to maintaining it your relationship with the holy spirit as a case study it will not maintain itself no the holy ghost is committed to you but you must also be committed to spiritual things in order to strengthen and to improve that relationship are we blessed very quickly i thought it was um i thought it was good to just share a few things about this now there are three basic kinds of relationship according to scripture and psychologists will tell us that there are three basic kinds of relationships number one please note there are general relationships you meet with everyone every day on the road passing in the office at home there are general relationships number two there are seasonal relationships for instance you have a classmate and whilst you are in school that relationship can last you have a short course and you have colleagues seasonal relationships and then number three there are destiny or covenant relationships The degree of investments that you put in them will not be the same are we together yes very quickly i wrote here seven keys to maintaining relationships all relationships but for for the purpose of this teaching maybe would want to zoom it down to destiny relationships very quickly i'll just run through them number one the first key to maintaining quality relationships is that you must be willing to be selfless you must be willing to be selfless please do not trivialize what you are learning tonight it is not basic at all it controls profound results in the kingdom my definition of love is the absence of self no matter what parameter you use the most accurate measure of love is the presence or the absence of self the degree to which self exists is the degree to which love is absent the degree to which love exists is the degree to which self is absent are we together jesus demonstrated perfect love because he gave everything Perfect selflessness equals perfect love. Partial selflessness equals partial love. Are we blessed? You must be committed to be selfless. 
the world that we live in today is a very parasitic world unfortunately in as much as relationships must be advantageous and must be beneficial but you see your frustration begins right from the onset of a relationship when your motive is to use an individual a company to use god to get something are we together now there are business people there are men and women of god there are even family people all they are concerned about is they first discern what can i get from you for as long as there is something to get i'm available but the day i cannot get anything from your company or your ministry that's it no you want quality relationships the first key to maintaining relationships is a willingness to be selfless being selfless does not mean you are foolish you will not be cheated no is a proof of love number two very quickly the second key is avoid competitive jealousy the second key avoid competitive jealousy proverbs 14 and verse 30 proverbs 27 and verse 4 just write it down for reference we'll deal with it hopefully when we're dealing with um it says a sound heart is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones envy has an effect that affects you eventually medically avoid competitive jealousy this is why they are called covenants now let me tell you something there are three there are three levels of perceiving things the highest is discernment followed by reason then emotions discernment reasoning emotions emotions is based on your your feeling this is the weakest is the weakest um, form of perception emotions because they vacillate I can be happy now and sad tomorrow are we in agreement then reasoning reasoning you are tied to logic and principles so there is some form of stability but the highest is discernment and discernment is what really produces covenant covenant is the strongest dimension of relationship because it is bound by an oath that is non-emotional are you getting what i'm saying now yes emotions vacillate when i'm happy i act this way when i'm angry i act this way that's emotions reason here and there you can try to put a lot of philosophy and if it adds up then you move if it doesn't then you but covenant relationships are powerful this is one of the secrets of the jews this is one of the secrets of non-christians they are people who are bound by covenant are we together yes believers largely operate their their perception is largely emotional wow this is wonderful you bought me this tomorrow is gone wow this is wonderful you gave me a job tomorrow it is done but covenant produces consistency the only way to conquer your emotional vacillations is to rise to the realm of covenant covenant gives the parties involved in the relationship security because they are aware that it's not about what they do or don't do you are bound by an oath we stand together we die together so the fear of trying to be excessively formal is no longer there jewish relationships till date operate by covenant are we blessed so avoid competitive jealousy and the cure is covenant you bind yourself to rejoice at the rising and the well-being of everyone whether it's a company whether it's a business you are a man of god you are in a covenant relationship with another man of god you bind yourself with a covenant that i will never i will fight any trace of jealousy whatsoever i commit myself to celebrating everyone around me who rises are we blessed avoid competitive jealousy 
jealousy has nothing to do with being good or bad it's the side effect of being human you have to understand jealousy is the natural consequence of someone who gets ahead of you and is excelling generally the temptation is that there will be something in you that tries to make you feel lazy make you feel like you are not making progress are we together so it is a natural response but you can fight it with revelation as mighty as god is he did not wait for us to be great before he gave us his life he took the risk right from a sinner you're a benefactor of divine life immediately what level of self-confidence are we blessed avoid competitive jealousy number three avoid backbiting and evil speaking these are basic things but just to let us know evil speaking evil speaking evil speaking titus chapter 3 and verse 2 just write for reference proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 titus 3 and verse 2 says to speak evil of no man and to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men to speak evil of no man number four very quickly avoid offense this is a very serious one you want to maintain destiny relationships avoid offense offense is the ease with which you get irritated angry or resentful the ease with which you get irritated angry or resentful first corinthians 13 and verse 5 gives us a warning that the character of true love is not easily offended the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful please look up there is no such thing like we are born like that that's how all of us are no that's how familiar spirits have kept the family for a long time and there can be deliverance are we together there is no such thing as we are like that i'm like that or i'm born again but when i get angry even god steps back until i calm down it's not a testimony yes we can start the way we are listen carefully we can start the way we are but we must trust god to grow into a level of maturity through knowledge through understanding are we blessed avoid offense say in the name of jesus i avoid offense number five practice forgiveness and tolerance practice forgiveness and tolerance for reference please write these scriptures down very quickly mark 11 and verse 25 mark 11 and verse 25 the bible says and when you stand praying forgive if ye have ought against any that your heavenly father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses very instructive ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32 ephesians 4 and verse 32 the bible says be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake had forgiven you for christ's sake had forgiven you this is very powerful the difference between forgiveness and tolerance or forbearance please look up i'm already laughing at myself the difference forgiveness has to do with trespassing forbearance has to do with accommodating that limitation knowing it will happen again are you seeing the difference now many of you can only forgive you cannot forbear you need both if you want to survive today's world you need both forgiveness and forbearance forbearance means you factor in that limitation and you know it will happen again respectfully maybe a man shouts at his wife and says sorry it will not happen again the wife should know it's a joke it will happen again you don't need forgiveness don't say i forgive you no you are wrong what you need is what forbearance there are many reasons why it will happen forbearance and forgiveness if you only know how to forgive you'll be in trouble 
because you will be tied to a fellow staff who will annoy you every day can i tell you this the moment you wake up in the morning just know that this day that the lord has made is full of many things and you have to prepare your heart in advance just when you're driving to the office someone comes and just tries to meander in a way that almost hits you and then insults you still do you need forgiveness no don't say i forgive you just when you are done with that one someone else will come you need forbearance you factor it that human beings are in, at different levels they have chosen to make themselves so and since i'm coexisting with them i factor it in my heart that this no longer surprises me say amen, amen. practice forgiveness and tolerance or forbearance number six the sixth way we maintain relationship is very instructive please listen be a contributor to the growth of the other party you must be a contributor to the growth of other uh, the other party in as much as we started by speaking about being selfless selflessness cannot be one-sided it is both ways are we together acts chapter 20 and verse 35 says it is more blessed to give than to receive it is more blessed to give than to receive there is no relationship that truly has a future when it is one-sided as far as contribution is concerned whether it's a spouse companies friends ministerial relationships it has to be two ways and let me tell you this money is the least way to contribute to a relationship you will be surprised but this is true money is not everything there are many things that don't need money are we together yes be a contributor to the growth of the other party pray for your business partner it is difficult to criticize anybody you pray for the cure for a critical spirit is a genuine heart that prays father lift this man of god bless this woman of god bless this ceo bless my wife bless my husband and you contribute to their growth it's children that always ask what did you buy for me as soon as you are arriving they are running around they don't care what has happened what did you buy for me many of us still have that attitude and we take that same attitude to god father we thank you you are the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david the this and that and god says what what are you here for just ask just leave all those preambles i know that you are not here for anything and he said god i've been talking to you about this are you not seeing i'm, I'm living in abuja Are we blessed think how beautiful a relationship is when the parties involved are aware that they become eternally committed to contributing to the growth and the well-being of one another that's how it works you're a business partner with five other people you've never done anything good you've not suggested anything right you've not even brought a man of god to pray for the business look at jonah you see that kind of relationship jonah was in the boat what happened he was sleeping while the people were dying they were throwing their things he would have just gotten up to say listen let me save you this loss i'm the reason he kept quiet until they casted lots and they found him jonah why did you allow people have to lose so much he was sleeping at least jesus was also sleeping but when he woke up he said no 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 it's not a parasitic relationship now step back peace be still they benefited from it are we together i don't want us to joke so much there are many serious things to say so i'm not going to give any examples <laughs> but it's interesting we live in a very interesting world there are people who have a way of discerning when you have prepared your meal you know that and here they come 
glory be to God, Calvary greetings, peace be unto this house, and so on and so forth. Please help the needy, please help the needy. Understand what I'm saying. But you see, the moment you become a receiver, a receiver alone, a receiver alone, a receiver alone, sooner or later you will find out that there is nobody around you again nobody receives a nobel prize for receiving you receive a nobel prize for your contribution is that true make up your mind from this teaching tonight look for all the people who have significantly blessed you you must find something in their life that you can do you can pray for them everybody has a need everybody has a desire it does not have to be monetary someone has been paying your school fees for three years four years make up your mind that one day you go and wash his car whether he allows you or not carry the bucket in advance and say sir i i know that you don't have a need i love david you see why david is a man after god's heart david sat down one day and said lord i know you are seated in heaven heaven is your throne the earth is your footstool you do not need any house but how can i be here and not have a house for my god i will arise and build you a house and god was listening and he said this man what do I now do with you? He said, well, your hands have shed blood. I can't allow you to build. He said, no problem. I will gather the raw materials and my son Solomon will build it. The man after God's heart. Not even Abraham was called a man after God's heart. This is a powerful secret. Could that be why your destiny helper stopped picking your calls? Because every time, we'll talk a bit on destiny helpers. Every time, you, you just call them. They know that the greeting is just a preamble. Let me tell you something with human beings. The kindest of men is not foolish. Nobody will indefinitely continue to invest in lives that do not have any discernment to at least participate. God, you keep blessing me. I'm breathing, I'm happy, I'm doing all these things. There has to be something that brings you joy. And so your assignment to find is to find out what pleases the Father. I, can, I may not be able to do everything, but I must find something that brings joy to the Father. If it's souls, if it's service in the house of God, there has to be something that directly supports kingdom come. Hallelujah. This is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased there are other beloved sons but he is not well pleased be a contributor to the growth of the other party one of our dear ladies was working one time in the bank and i gave her an advice i said you package wine and go and meet your boss just ask for permission step into his office and he will usually be serious that's work hour and greet him just tell him sir i'm here to say thank you thank you for believing in me thank you for the time you've taken to train me thank you for all that you've invested in me i want you to know that it's not been in vain this is a token of my honor and my appreciation let me tell you what he will do he will act like you just made noise he will say go it's when you shut that door he will sit down and say i've gotten my next executive director whereas someone is shouting and binding and jumping up and down and rolling and doors will never open because these are the mysteries of the kingdom relationships are powerful there are people today who are occupying electoral positions not because they necessarily have the capacity to the degree that should warrant them sitting there. Certain relationships. I remember you did something for me in 1991. Now that God has brought me in this position, I would not leave you hungry. It's powerful to invest in people. So think whilst you are seated and listening to me. What may be the reason why helpers of your destiny would come and then leave? It could be that you are focused on what I will get. My uncle just arrived. His car is dirty. No one can have the wisdom to wash it. 
he's hungry no one gave him a meal and yet everybody is sitting down and gossiping now he's about to go let's see how much he will give then the man just walks away then you curse and curse and say god these are the people that were praying no and i will not be silent i will always you are contributing to his joy for as long as i am breathing i will always so you practice this use it for any relationship and watch how things begin to change how their perception begins to change towards you are we learning now very quickly let me chip in the ministry of destiny help us we have to learn a bit still under the law of relationships this is one of the very solid mini mysteries that the lord gave me my life has changed as a result of this and i pray in the name of jesus christ that for as many who are listening that as you learn these principles and apply them may your life change like night and day in the name of jesus christ please write this down as a subtopic still under the law of relationships the irrefutable ministry of destiny help us mark chapter 2 please very quickly for reference mark chapter 2 will start from verse 1 mark chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says and again he entered into capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house follow carefully verse 2 and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much about the door and he preached the word unto them so a crusade is happening here now and then the bible says and they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four that means he was carried by four men a man who was sick paralyzed but he was carried by four men look at this and when they could not come nigh unto him jesus now for the press they uncovered the roof where he was and when they had broken it up they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay the full text is from verse 1 to 12 watch this can you imagine the level of determination they said jesus is in town and four men came together they said mr man you are crippled you cannot walk but we insist you must receive your miracle the bible says they took him they if they had dropped him there they would have tried this brings me to the definition of destiny helpers please write who are they who are this group of people called destiny helpers destiny helpers are men and women equipped empowered ordained and assigned by god again men and women equipped empowered ordained and assigned by god to help you fulfill your destiny and to take you to the next level in life men and women equipped empowered ordained and assigned by god to help you fulfill your destiny and to take you to the next level powerful destiny helpers they are not just freelance helpers they are men ordained please listen men equipped empowered ordained and assigned by god to help you fulfill your destiny and to take you to the next level i've said it here and i will repeat it is true that it is god that blesses it is god that lifts but god blesses men through men all blessings come from god through men to men your promotion comes from god through men to men the open doors from god through men
to men. The restoration from God through men to men. It is God that lifts, but he uses men. Now, according to scripture, there are four types of destiny helpers. And in the name of Jesus, I pray that your life will experience all four. And I pray that God will make you all four. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Please walk with me very quickly. Number one, for the sake of time. Divine connectors. The first kind and the first type of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. You find that in 2 Kings chapter 5. I may not read it for reference, just write. The story of Naaman and the little slave girl. The Bible says there was a man who was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a valiant man in war. But he was a leper. And then one time when they brought the slaves from war, there was a little slave girl who served his wife and one day she said oh that my lord would go down there is a prophet here and there and then one thing led to the other cut the long story short after a few chapters we find that naaman is now completely whole divine connectors do not have the power to help you directly but they can lead you to those who have what it takes to help you now you have to understand this divine connectors may not have the ability in themselves to help you they may not be able to pray for you to be healed they may not be able to give you a job but they have the power to connect you somebody know somebody know somebody who God can use to lift you the key to receiving from divine connectors is meekness and discernment because they will always come in forms that may not be desirable a divine connector respectfully speaking may be a bus conductor he may just hand you a little advert of a crusade happening and you're just looking at the boy and laughing he may not even know what he gave you suddenly you find out that a man of god is coming to town and you remember my mother is dying in the hospital that divine connector lets you know that a crusade is happening you take mama to that crusade ground that becomes not only her miracle but the transformation of the whole family now we live in a world that prides around packaging we should be excellent but we live in a world where the moment you don't have a persona and a form that seems to look like you are succeeding people can demean you this is why many people keep passing their divine helpers every day because they are looking for people who carry the persona sometimes it may not be so your divine helper can be your your divine connector can be your child speaking nonsense every day but one day the Holy Ghost will speak through him. And that one counsel will be what will save you. There are businesses today under pressure. There are ministries under pressure. And in the midst of all that, there are divine helpers. Divine connectors. Every day moving left, right and center. Is God helping us? That's why we must be discerning as we deal with people don't demean people you may be throwing away the next 10 years of your life four men came and held that man and said you must see Jesus do you know that some of the greatest evangelist pastors around the globe some of the people who got them born again are still alive but nobody knows about them but if they did not save those people or lead those people to a place where god would touch them we would not hear of them today please discern divine connectors that every day of your life i assure you there's someone god is bringing to your life to your office now i know this is a very sensitive um a very sensitive discussion because we live in evil times there are some of you who have tried to reach out to evil people and paid the price as a result 
they would come and carry a form of meekness and some of them are terrorists some of them are evil people may god separate them from your life in jesus name many armed robbers have come like beggars they came and pleaded and said please can i you give me food to eat while you just want to help them so we need sensitivity that's why i said you need discernment but i tell you this divine connectors are real somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who has what you are praying for the answer to your prayer has left heaven is with men are we blessed number two the second kind or type of destiny helpers that we need they are called men of access and influence it's good to have divine connectors but sometimes you need the people who have the resources the credibility the track record directly men of access and influence who are they these are men who through the sacrifice their sacrifice and their diligence they have become captains of industry they have become gatekeepers to realms they have the credibility they have the endorsement they have the goodwill of people let me tell you this in this kingdom one of the ways that god favors us and advances us is through the endorsement the good speaking of credible people there are times that you have the grace you have the certificate you can take the contract but you do not have what it takes to stand at the gate yet you will need someone who is already at the gate to speak for you joseph could interpret dreams but he needed someone who could stand and speak for him in this case you need men and women who have paid the price can i tell you this it is the absence of this in our lives that's why many gifted people remain grounded are we together there are many powerful worshipers in this nation there are many powerful men of god in this nation there are many powerful potential ceos but the gatekeepers have not seen you enough to extend the right hand of fellowship please hear what i'm saying one man of influence can use his influence and credibility just sign behind his card please help this man signed so 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 and so that's it and while you are there speaking english they tell you please go away i'm helping you not because of what you are saying this man helped me so 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 time <laughs> a very a very a very interesting discussion back then in zaria there was a very interesting story the former emir i was told that one time someone wanted to go to nda the nigerian defense academy now and then for some reason he did not meet the height requirement so he, he was disqualified and someone went to meet the emir and said look this man we want him to become a soldier and now he's been disqualified and the emir said they should go and tell the commandant that the emir has added his height that's a powerful revelation i've increased your height to the requirements they want you know what that means to the person who uh, ah may god bring a man of influence your life in the name of jesus christ let me tell you this difficult things become very easy when credible people speak for you everybody respects somebody help this person that's it oh my daughter has been looking for a job my son has been looking for a job really why didn't you tell me okay you come that's it please do not undermine the power of people's credibility and track record there are people who have spent years establishing their track record around industries around businesses even in ministry one genuine endorsement from a credible person can end hardship completely from your life are we blessed men of access and influence number three 
the third kind of destiny helper still discussing the law of relationships they are called gifted people gifted people sometimes you just need skillful and talented people men and women who will use their gifts their talents and their skill to help you accomplish god's purpose first samuel chapter 16 please from verse 17 to 21 men who will use their gifts their skills their talent to help you accomplish your divine purpose we're reading to verse 21 now look at this please the bible says and saul said unto his servants provide me now a man that can play well some version say can play skillfully and bring him to me 18 then answered one of the servants and said behold i have seen a son of jesse the bethlehemite that is cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person what a description and the bible says and the lord is with him 19 wherefore saul sent messengers unto jesse and said send me david thy son which is with the sheep 20 and jesse took the ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by david his son unto saul last verse and david came to saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer the lifting power of skill before you pray that god will bring great people to you please do well to work on yourself so that shame and reproach will be far from you so that when you step into the corridors of greatness you will not be sent back in shame praying that god will bring great people to you without refining your gifts will only recycle pain and recycle unpleasant seasons in your life are we together sharpen your gifts sharpen your skill now you can pray father i've done my homework i've taken advantage of your grace i've engaged myself meaningfully now let the helpers come when they come and place a demand you're trusting god for a contract for instance millions billions do your work well so that the day they call you they will call you and say prove yourself and in 10 minutes they say you are the one we're looking for come can i tell you this excellence and competence is a language there are people who can speak it and there are people who understand it many of us are mediocre in many ways i say this with every sense of responsibility the goal is to challenge us in africa especially we the generation of young people god is helping us we have zeal but we we the ability to stay and become skillful There are great companies today having turnovers in billions of dollars and some of them do not have up to 20 staff. They don't have a staff strength of up to 20, but one of their staff can be equal to 100 others, skillful and gifted people. I'm telling you, it's one of the blessings that God has given in this ministry, the gift of gifted people. The kinds of minds, the levels of intelligence, intellectual infrastructure, that in this is in this ministry is amazing it's easy to credit every result to me but you will be surprised to know that my work is largely oversight there are intelligent people that god has blessed me with you are a ceo you're a leader of all sorts please go to god and cry send me genuine people send me gifted people one gifted person can take your company to heights unimagined one gifted person can take your church your ministry to heights unimagined are we together gifted people skilled people number four very quickly the last kind or type of destiny helpers we need they are called burden bearers burden bearers these are trusted and faithful people who will stay with you through storms will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed there are times in your life where you need men and women who stay they stay through the rain they stay through the storms they pray with you they fast with you many companies today 
who have raised people blessed people the moment the companies go through any kind of unpleasant season everybody just runs away and leaves them let me tell you this woe betides a man who looks left and right in your days and your times of storm and will not find at least one person standing by you the world is full of psychophants but there are genuine people there are genuine people who love you sincerely my first prayer is may you be one of such and then may you receive the ministry of such don't just pray for burden bearers until you are prepared to be one burden bearers are not looking for your crown they are looking for the cross where is the cross you cannot carry so let's take it together burden bearers are not those who stand with you they are those who die with you when jesus was hanging on that cross ladies and gentlemen this 33 year old gentleman who had turned the world upside down where were the five thousand aside men and children who ate his bread and his fish where was the woman with the issue of blood jesus is on his way to golgotha and not one of them was there to say jesus if they are killing you they should kill me only john and his mother certain men came to david in the cave of adulam when he was running away from saul and the bible says they bound themselves with an oath that they will not rest until they make him king you come and meet a man hiding is that the kind of leader you want and they said we'll stay with you till you win till you thrive till you rise and you will rule over us burden bearers every church needs genuine burden bearers every man of god needs genuine burden bearers every businessman ceo needs genuine burden bearers there are people today who are bereaved and you would be surprised to know that most of the people they raised and lifted would not have the courtesy to say i remember in 1991 you were there for me no there are many politicians today who are not in government in truth when some of them were in power they helped many people they lifted many people but now that it looks like there's no political prospect again many people leave oh what a shame listen you must be able to trust someone enough with your life and say no matter what it is we're standing here we're not standing to win we're standing by covenant are we together yes burden bearers when jesus was on his way to golgotha he turned bleeding and he did not see anyone and there was a gentleman called simon of cyrene he said i will carry that cross with you and he carried the cross down to golgotha it's my prayer that you will find someone in your life who can call you and say now that your dad is gone now that your mom is gone how have you been faring and you are saying my god he says every month i will call at least once to find out that you are doing well and first you suspect because human beings are selfish and he said no 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 strings attached i've made up my mind Bazanji Bazanji kunyaba Listen some of you whilst you are seated here listening to me especially some of you that God has helped to be senior executives or you are leaders in some sort what I'm saying now is is getting to you because I'm bringing memories you are now remembering it is true the company folded up and everybody went away things began to happen your health began to deteriorate and all the people who would come oh you are king of kings you are lord of lords but i can tell you one thing i have learned this by experience i have learned this through mentorship and i have learned this through scripture there are real burden bearers 
you don't generalize and think everyone is a psychophant everyone is fake there are people who will cry with you there are people who will pray with you you will say go and they say to where an example of such people was Ruth to Naomi your God will be my God your people will be my people as a result she married Boaz are we blessed tonight divine connectors connecting you to those who can help you men of influence and access using their credibility to endorse you gifted people making things happen within your organization your ministry your life helping kingdom come happen for you and then burden bearers those ones may not move you forward but they stop you from going back while others are standing in front of you clapping for you they are the ones who pray for you when you do not know they pray they fast for you when you are not seeing them some of them do not even know you but they stand to pray are you okay now please don't feel bad I respond to an average of six to seven hundred text messages every day and most of them are full of people who have needs and I'm sent to them but every once in a while in the maze of the many text messages with the needs please I'm not putting you under pressure to do it not at all you would find someone who just says apostle how are you I'm not calling for prayer I just want to find out are you okay You've been busy, you've been traveling around. And I may not even know them, but I look at those text messages and I bless them from my heart for being so thoughtful. Because sometimes, you see, when God sends you, people forget that you are a man, you are only of God. A father of faith in Enugu called me into his office and he said, Apostle, let me tell you something. Africans kill their prophets. Be careful. There are many of you who are insulting your parents, insulting your loved ones, insulting your CEO. Do you know why he's been behaving this way? Maybe he's had losses. Maybe he's lost his loved ones. Maybe his marriage is tearing apart. People may not tell you what they are going through. But you must give room and give allowance. There must be a reason. In any case, let us pray. Let us pray. I don't know why my husband has been acting up like this. He may not tell you. Great men don't just open up carelessly. It's not weakness. They have been trained to be strong. They are storm riders. So they keep quiet even while they are dying. Why are you not eating this food, my husband? I don't have the appetite. There is the war on his head. It's out of love he will not tell you. It's not like he's hiding things from you. And then you go and pray and say, Lord, I don't know what may be happening to my husband. But when I came into his life, I did not just come as a wife. I also came as a priest. Now I remove that regalia of wifehood. I put my robe as a priest. Lord, protect this man. Lord, bless him. I may not know what may be happening. And battles, victories, victories upon victories. Hallelujah. Joseph was a burden bearer before an interpreter of dreams. He looked at the countenance of people in the prison. He would have said, young people, we are here for a long time. You better smile. But he looked at them. He said, no, something is wrong with your countenance. Even though I am a prisoner, I am concerned. What may be the problem? Then they said their dreams. Pazanji soropa te Bazanji Kunyaba Borden Bearers It's been seven years and you do not have a child and everyone is saying you must confess how you got married we must get to know now 
and someone comes to you and says I don't want to know what the doctor said I will hold your hand and we will die here until we see the promises of God come and whilst you are sleeping a scripture comes they send you a scripture by text he keeps them in perfect peace and that's just the scripture you need listen to me don't just pray that God will send them be the them first Lord make me a burden bearer there has to be somebody in your life that you are able to stand with and say I'm standing with you a great politician in this nation lost election when he lost election more than 90 percent of all his calls and relationships vanished within hours including people who were praising him 24 hours before all gone it's painful to look around and not find where are they where are those who ate your bread where are those who said you are king over us there are parents today who are in pain because they look at their children and they find out that in old age haven't spent time spent resources raising them in old age unable to move bound to a wheelchair these children push them around and mama looks and says do you know what i went through to give birth to you and they speak all kinds of english and push them away the blessing of one who is in pain is a real blessing because he has nothing to protect let me give you an advice when someone who is in pain blesses you it comes from the depth of their prophetic construction because they've cried in they've cried away every hypocrisy they've cried away every stage management I've had the honor and the privilege to cry with a few people and it was such a blessing that God granted me grace to be there for them relationships you cry with someone today tomorrow God lifts that person and he looks at you and says I remember are you not so 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 and so thank you for standing by me in 2000 I thought I would not make it because I lost my father my mother thank you after two years you were still checking up on me what do you do now things are going bad do you have a house no come and collect the keys to a brand new house tomorrow and people say you are lucky lucky don't you know that being there for people is an investment an investment with real returns you can list it among your businesses what do you do for a living real estate and I'm there for people only a fool will laugh at you a man will pay his staff hundred thousand two hundred thousand per month but he will give a burden bearer his heart take not money now you know what happens when you stand in for the gospel you understand what he was saying who will go for us and Isaiah says Lord I'm here I don't know what will happen on the way while I go I may die on the way but I'm here for you you see why there is the Matthias crown the Matthias is the one who finished strong even at death are we blessed the law of relationships so when you are praying and say Lord send me helpers of destiny you know what you are praying now send me divine connectors send me men of influence send me gifted people but in all your sending oh god also send me burden bearers send me burden bearers are we blessed the law of relationships this is the world of men if you know god that is priceless but you must know men the system by which spiritual things are translated into your results here and now after this service go back and study again get this teaching and listen to it you can find it online it's free listen to it make decisions 
go and meet your boss by tomorrow and say sir i just came to bless you what for he's used to psycho fans coming and he said no i'm not asking for anything i just came to say thank you um i notice you get very busy i bought a pack of water just to say thank you okay 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 go away it's not true no man has immunity against genuine love and kindness no man our pride will make us pretend as if we, it didn't create any effect it's not true the day of reckoning is coming he will remember you when someone wants to recommend you to be downsized the owner of the company will say remove me from the company before you remove that person who can speak for you when you are not there plant memories of your kindness in the minds of people not just those who have risen but those who are rising those who have risen you've already seen the height but those who are rising believe in people when younger ministers come to meet me sometimes they are afraid when they come this is the apostle and i just give them a big hug how are you oh we have a small fellowship 12 people and they are ashamed of saying it and then i remind them i said do you know how many we were our first crusade and they are so healed by that statement they are so comforted by it and i tell them how are you doing give me a high five and they are wondering is this the man that i watch online is this the man i watch on tv no there is nothing to us by ourselves it is the excellency of the power and the grace of god that works in us and that young man lives with confidence and courage and he says i can make it then i can make it let people not leave you and say god just kill me after what happened now just no nobody has the monopoly of increase and exploits and impact god is the lifter of us all you must believe in people enough that's leadership discern potentials invest in it not to receive something necessarily but so that you rise we've had the privilege of lifting so many people today and such a joy and an honor every time i have the opportunity to see them rising and doing well i'm happy have you learned something tonight the law of relationships be fruitful means be relational you are a ceo of a company one day surprise your staff call all of them and just say gentlemen let me steal out 10 minutes from your time how are you all doing and they are all serious because they are afraid they've been hearing rumors that they will sack everybody they are behaving well and you say no not that may god just bless you i just wanted you to know that i am grateful for having very great staff like you thank you we're moving our company forward the numbers are showing we're making progress and i'm the face that people see but i want you people to know that you are partakers not just of the shame but of the glory thank you they will stop being staff they will become family the one who was stealing in secret will repent without you knowing he will go back and say why steal because that sense of inheritance has been given to him we have to move goodness next law the law of honor just spare me a few minutes we must finish this this night the law of honor first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 this is law number six the mysteries of the kingdom these are the irrefutable principles that walk themselves behind the scenes and are responsible for the lifting of many the rising of many the law of honor wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me i will likely esteem please lend me your attention the law of honor please write this down what is honor very quickly honor is the discerning 
honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of uniqueness rewarding of usefulness rewarding of excellence honor is the discerning honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of a person for your uniqueness for your value for your excellence it's a potent spiritual law the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of uniqueness of usefulness or value and of excellence please write this down again all failures all failures with no exception can be traced to dishonor all all failures can be traced to dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles all failures honor is the key for access the assignment of honor is to ensure that closed doors are open please write it down you have to get this honor is the seed or the key for access what is this honor then this honor is the trivializing of value the trivializing of value this honor is the trivializing of value to dishonor means to take for granted to dishonor means to lightly esteem now there's no time to begin to run through scriptures to show you the examples of dishonor in the bible noah and his sons genesis 9 from 20 and 27 sarah and hagar in fact maybe let's just look at sarah and hagar as a case study then we have moses aaron and miriam we have elisha and the little children he caused them and a she bear came and ate them and so on and so forth but um genesis 16 from verse 1 to 10 is a very interesting rendition the story of sarai and hagar now sarah abraham's wife bare him no children and she had an handmaid an egyptian whose name was hagar please follow closely and sarai said to abram behold now the lord had restrained me from bearing i pray thee go into my maid huh. it may be that i may obtain children by her and abraham hearkened to the voice of sarai and sarai abraham's wife took hagar and made the egyptian after Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband Abraham to be his wife verse 4 now watch closely and he went into Hagar and she conceived and when she saw that she conceived her mistress was despised in her eyes are you following the story now so Hagar has a child for Abraham now she begins to despise her mistress and sarai said to abraham my wrong be upon thee i have given my maid into thy bosom and when she saw that she had conceived i was despised in her eyes the lord judged between me and thee we're reading to 10 very quickly but abraham said to sarai behold thy maid is in thy hand do to her as it pleased thee and when sarai dealt hardly you see the consequences of dishonor dealt hardly with her she fled from her face seven and the angel of the lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness and by the fountain in the way of shore and he said hagar sarai's maid what did the angel call her even though she ran away heaven still recognized that she was still the maid of sarah wow that means you were anointed to serve this woman even though you are running away now on your own but in, in the records in the spirit you were designed to be sarah's maid whence camest thou and whither wilt thou go and she said i flee from the face of my mistress sarah nine hear what the angel said the angel of the lord said unto her i want to help you but there must be a restoration of this pattern return to thy mistress and submit yourself under her hands the angel wants to help her but not in dishonor you are in a position of dishonor you cannot even secure the help of god 
return and correct and then the bible says the angel of the lord said to her i will multiply thy seed exceedingly and it shall not be numbered for multitude and then you would read that she returned now write the following things about honor very quickly number one if you learn honor you can access any environment on earth if you learn honor you can access any environment on earth this is true all environments political environments intellectual environments spiritual environments they are all honor dependent if you learn honor you can access any environment on earth number two honor is not a gift it is a virtue that you imbibe honor there's no such thing as the gift of honor there is the grace that produces honor but honor is not a gift write this down don't judge or reward people by their potentials alone don't judge or reward people by their potentials alone judge them by their sense of honor don't judge or reward people just by their potentials alone judge and reward them by their sense of honor never draw people closer than their last level of honor it will be dangerous to both you and them are we together write this down please honor just like relationships is currency honor is currency the currency that makes you master over your future this is true honor is currency you can use it to buy the future who are those who are deserving of honor let me run through the list very quickly god the first and the highest person deserving of all our honor is god first samuel 2 30. number two parents parents your parents deserve your honor deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 16. parents deserve honor not well-behaved parents parents Are we together? I say this with every sense of respect. Waiting for your father or your mother to behave well for you to honor them is treason against yourself. Provided you came from them, they eternally deserve your honor. Number three, your spouse, husband and wife. First Peter chapter 3, 5 to 7 your spouse husband and wife mutual honor not just honor let my wife honor me let my husband honor me mutual honor praise the lord and then next authorities now this is hard hard for africa hard for nigeria honor those who deserve our honor governmental authorities right from the counselors right to presidency they deserve our honor next men and women of god ministers of the gospel they deserve our honor first thessalonians chapter 5 from verse 12 and 13 first thessalonians 5 12 13 then first timothy 5 17. the bible says to know them which labor among you and are over you in the lord and admonish you you see that to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake that's very very important all of these people are deserving of honor now let's end this very quickly by providing a few keys that will help us practice honor number one wisdom you cannot truly practice honor without wisdom you need the wisdom to navigate through the tides of the the complexity of men wisdom number two you must have a deep regard 
a deep regard you want to honor people you must have a deep regard for the office and the person of that individual doesn't have to be a man of god anyone you truly cannot honor until you have a deep regard for the office and then the person of that individual maybe a politician maybe a business person in ministry etc number three the third key to honor learn to celebrate the person openly and sincerely openly and sincerely the third key to honor number four very quickly you must pray for him or her consistently that's how you show honor you pray for him or her consistently next contribute to improving his or her life through service and so on and so forth contribute to improving his or her life through service you cannot truly honor someone and not be a contributor to the betterment of that person's life and then finally to show honor giving whether financial resources or any kind of material blessing is one of the ways you can bless his or her life home ministry business any kind of giving at all that supports them is a show of honor let me tell you this i submit to you in the name of the lord jesus christ second only to the law of encounter this is one of the most powerful spiritual laws i have learned in my own life i cannot begin to give you the testimonies the lifting power of this mystery it has brought me to realms levels dimensions is brought me before people that by the natural sequence the natural progression of growth i should never be found among them honor is powerful is a qualifier it can take you to realms beyond your educational qualification your spiritual qualification your intellectual qualification it can prepare a seat for you among the great this is true so we may we must re-examine our concepts of honor return back with this understanding show honor and you will have access access to the hearts of men access to their resources when you show honor number seven the last of the spiritual laws and then we pray for tonight the law of spiritual empowerment seven mysteries that God has given us in this series these are the truths that control strange results that help ordinary people to take advantage of the grace of God and rise to enviable positions in destiny where they are placed in positions where they can make kingdom come a reality and then they can improve their lives I guarantee you in the name of the Lord you trade these laws you will walk wonders in your life you will stand back and watch like a man playing a chess you will play life like a chess and then you will see that success is very intentional the law of spiritual empowerment every destiny and every divinely ordained assignment will require spiritual empowerment for its fulfillment if you're writing please write this down every destiny and every divinely ordained assignment will require spiritual empowerment for its fulfillment every destiny and every divinely ordained assignment will require spiritual empowerment for its fulfillment next point you cannot produce supernatural extraordinary results without the backing of the spirit realm how true write this down and please look up we're wrapping up you cannot produce supernatural extraordinary results without the backing of the spirit realm please look up ladies and gentlemen hear me there is only so much men can do in the strength of the flesh 
there is a level of results that if you ever see a man cross it tells you the realm of the spirit came to assist him politically spiritually in ministry in business for instance if you suddenly hear if the papers carry a report tomorrow that joshua selman has become the richest man in nigeria none of you will say what did i do you will say where did i go to they will say come i know you just talk to me where did you go to if this one is not this kind of result is not what did you do it's where did you go to there are results that are not about what you have done it's where you have gone to listen to what i'm telling you there are results in ministry that is not just what you have done is who is assisting you there has to be a spirit either an evil spirit assisting you or the holy ghost but you are not alone for sure not for that kind of result there are political results there are intellectual results there are financial results you cannot produce beyond a threshold unassisted no sir we study your results and we know immediately we can investigate what spirit but just for seeing the result we know that there has to be a spirit behind you no your songs can't go to the nation just like that your sermons cannot reach the whole globe just like that no sir the earth is too busy what made you keep their attention and compel them to pay attention to the investment of the spirit upon you there has to be a spirit back in oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh. oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Please write this down we're working with time spiritual empowerment is a non-negotiable requirement if you truly desire to fulfill your destiny and serve the purposes of god spiritual empowerment is a non-negotiable requirement please listen to me i'm not just talking to men of god i'm talking to anyone at all who desires to excel non-negotiable requirement we call it the anointing not an anointing the anointing the anointing is an ordination into god's dimension of results the anointing is a legitimization to begin to produce results that are higher than your human capacity please listen we're wrapping up this series Psalm 92 and verse 10. Please help us very quickly. We have to pray now. But my horn, Joshua Selman, thou shalt exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and indeed I shall be anointed with fresh oil. With fresh oil. With fresh oil. Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth isn't it amazing that the word had to be anointed the word had to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about with that anointing producing results that humans don't produce producing results that humans don't produce he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him let me tell you this the realm of the spirit is alive and strong it only honors those who operate legitimately the anointing of the spirit upon you legitimizes your operation it grants you capacity to produce results that are higher than your age higher than your level of educational qualification hear me there are things men cannot do it's not within the realm of men a man cannot change another man 
the world will not pay attention just because of oratory it takes more than that the world will not pay attention to you there are many people doing what you are doing but there is a grace that separates it brands you and compels your generation to hear your voice let me tell you this there are great ministers of the gospel here in worship i spotted solomon lange here and um you know they will tell you listen very carefully prosper is here and i'm sure a, a number of them are scattered there's a nollywood actor who came out with his wife here there are members of parliament here they will tell you in truth some of them may have had opportunities where people told them can i help you i want to take you somewhere and they say no 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 but just because you said no does not mean someone said no satan took jesus to a mountain and showed him the glory and said i have been here a long time since you threw me from heaven save yourself this stress all the kings they submit to me just bow to me and i will give you the keys it's not only jesus who has been taken to that mountain there are many who have gone there i want your songs to go around the earth just bow to me and they bow and receive that key no matter what they sing the world must hear them they know that is not what they are singing they know that there is the backing of the spirit a spirit brothers and sisters what we celebrate today that we call koinonia it will be flattery to believe that the man behind this is the one you are seeing no no there is only so much a man can do i have tasted of the power of the holy ghost i know what the anointing of the spirit can do i have seen god's power spiritual empowerment lift businessmen i have seen spiritual empowerment bless people that the anointing can make your destiny helper to not sleep and get up and think about you he does not know what on the, what the influence behind him the grace that heals i was not born prophesying no i was not born giving a word of knowledge There are thousands following this right now all across the world all across the globe connecting from all continents there are people who there are whole churches now i say this with every sense of humility there are churches for decades in the u.s in europe all they play for their midweek service are these teachings they sit down as a congregation these are not ministries under this ministry these are independent ministries i don't know them Brothers and sisters, this is more than physics and maths. This is more than science. This is a technology of God's anointing upon the lives of men. Hear me. There are, demographically speaking, there are about 3.2 million people in Abuja. Men are too busy to focus on you. There must be something on your head that isolates you. We're about to pray. I know that with the time is gone, but please don't be in a hurry. There's something you must receive. When God was sending me to ministry, I prayed a prayer and I said, Lord, please do not send me with just a sermon. My background may not be able to provide the kind of advantage that I need in ministry. even though my grandfather was a man of god but i did not grow up having men of god around who can say okay this is our son go and preach in 10 places so that they will know you there are people who come from this background we know ourselves we are products of god's mercy oh but when that oil comes on you my goodness my god that charm like operation of the anointing from where you are you begin to rise just when you think you are done god says i'm not done the anointing i wish i had the liberty to share testimonies with us the things that this grace can do you came here tonight and you have learned these six laws but hear me 
there are some of you as you are standing right now you are the first person in your family to even get this far but hear me I love my nation Nigeria I love Africa but I want to be honest with you living in today's world our world today has been marred with prejudices of tribe prejudices of religion prejudices of region are we together prejudices of your continent there are too many disadvantages by default how do you think you're going to navigate your way using the natural sequence of things your lifetime will not be enough for that lifting and I said Lord would you grant that this grace from heaven that can come on an individual and turn his life around I look at my life today and on one hand I am grateful but on the other hand I fear God we're about to pray we're wrapping up this series it won't be long just five minutes and we're done listen to me I respect the fact that you are a CEO but if the only thing in that company is business ideas you are in trouble not in today's world God is calling on you and saying will you allow me will you allow me come into partnership with you by sending my anointing there are families all that you have are good people in the family goodness is not enough you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost the grace of God Solomon Lange sang it so powerfully. He said, this grace of God is a thing of wonder. It's true. I have seen what God has done in my life. I submit to you, dear people of God. The whole world is watching. And I apologize if ever I sound arrogant. But I have stood before kings. I know what it means to be honored. God has helped me. I don't serve God today because of what to eat. I know what the anointing of the Holy Spirit can do. But listen to me. At this point in my life, my joy is not myself and my results again. No. You get to a point where God has been too faithful to you. You are not looking for results for yourself again. Your joy is to see what God has done in your life. Reproduced in the life of everyone. This is why the Lord granted grace to take this series. Please listen to me. Dear CEO, oil and gas, construction. Do you not know that there are many files upon that table? What makes you believe yours will be preferred? Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. Are you ready to pray you are going to immerse everything that is a concern in your life under the influence of the anointing it's truly time for us to rise in one minute i leave you with the maker of your destiny cry before god the god of all flesh lift your voice and pray please pray we have just five minutes pray Lord, you have brought me here tonight to lift me. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your job. The power of the Holy Ghost. The supernatural advantage upon your life. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. The overflow. Someone is praying online. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. One song by this man of God, Ekweme. The anointing of the Spirit came upon that song. And God took him and his song has been a blessing all around the globe help them please 
Minister Solomon Lange is here. That song sang his songs on the grace of God and released it. You thought you were just listening to music, but there was a grace that took that song. I remember I was one time it was Nathaniel Bassi who was telling me of a few years, not very far, nobody knew him. I saw one of my photos. You know all these photos when you are starting ministry that when you see is. I saw what I was wearing. I looked at myself. I was almost going to say, where am I? Hear me. Let no man despise you. There is an anointing that can come. Are you ready to pray? Power from on high rest upon my life. Rest upon my life. Rest upon my ministry. In the name of Jesus, rest upon my career. Someone is praying. Empowerment, the capacity to produce God's dimension of results in ministry, in business, in politics. Oh, dear politician, it will take more than votes and money for you to sit on that throne. Oh, dear career person. It will take more than the passage of time for you to excel. Please pray. Hallelujah. Please look up. There are different kinds and different anointings. There is a grace for favor. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace for wealth and abundance. There really is a grace for that. There is a grace for leadership. People don't just listen to you because you are right. They listen to you because the grace to compel them to hear you is there. It's called the hear ye him anointing. There is the grace for influence. There is a grace for miracles, signs and wonders. You don't just pray for the sick. You don't just prophesy, except if you are lying. There is the grace for influence, secular influence. That in an environment like the judiciary, like, like, like parastatals, God can lift you. Daniel had such a grace. And through the reign of three kings, he was still seated. One more time, pray. Father, in my family, in my ministry, I obtain grace. Fresh grace for the new season. Tired of natural living. Tired of ministry naturally. Tired of business naturally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen very carefully. Next week Sunday is a miracle service for me. And I'd like you to come with your heart desperate. One of the things that we're going to be receiving in that miracle service, as God grants grace, I will be calling specific people with proven track records 
in certain fields to release upon us the grace that took them there where God brought them whether it is ministry whether it is career anointings are transferable what is on you is what controls what is around you but for tonight let me speak over your life father in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I decree and declare every gate that has refused to answer to your destiny use these mysteries as keys and I declare that you will swing open those gates in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare everyone here who has experienced a slow place very slow pace of your progression in life it's like you are moving but you are not moving I declare acceleration for you by the Spirit I will keep praying this prayer as long as I live until I see it manifest in the lives of people the grace for visibility and influence the grace that can make the nation and a city to see what you represent and to place a demand upon you may that grace come upon your life now may that grace come upon your life now the anointing that drives men to the secret place to the place of prayer the place of fasting the place of an encounter with the world may that grace rest upon you now the mantle of honor that makes you preferred in the name that is above all names I call upon the God of my covenant may it rest upon you listen for some of you before Sunday miracle service Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.